two parts. Jack Spade back here with you, High Noon Leatherworks, for today, episode two of the series on making the Western wallet. So, we're going to get started today by using our pattern from the last episode and cut out all of our pieces of leather that we'll get sewn together for this project. So, come on in. I'll bring you closer and let's get going. All right, so we have our patterns that we made in the last episode uh, for our card holders, uh, for our flaps, for our bills, and then the overall pattern for the outside of the wallet. Um, so we're ready to uh, use that pattern to cut out our leather. I've got a thicker piece of leather here for the outside of the wallet and then I've got a thinner piece of leather here and that's going to be for the card holders because we don't want that as thick as the outside piece and we'll also use this for the uh, bill holders on the inside so hopefully we can get every piece we need out of this one piece of leather. So we'll start out by taking our pattern for the overall outside with the flap and we'll trace it. Now here's the thing, you need to make sure since you're now you're, you're dealing with inside outside, this is going to be the outside of our leather while the smooth side of the leather is going to be the outside. So you want to make sure that you mark your pattern. I'll put on here Western Wallet and then I'm going to mark cut this side up. So I'll mark that on my pattern so I know, hey, when I'm cutting this leather, I need to make sure this side of the pattern is up. Because if not, when I go to fold that over, the rough side's going to be on the outside. And unless that's something that you're actually looking for, uh, it's not going to turn out the way you want it. <laughs> so uh, I'll go ahead and lay my pattern on my leather take my pen remember I always I like to use a decent ballpoint pen to do my pattern drawing on my leather it just makes a nice line and that's all gonna come off of there when I Do my beveling with my beveling edge tool all those marks come off there's my outline of my pattern on my leather and I'll set that pattern aside and one thing I am going to do is I haven't changed my blade for a while uh, and it looks like I've used both sides I always want to use both ends before I change it so I always keep a plastic container with a lid to put used blades in. I don't want to leave those used blades just sitting in a drawer or throw them in the trash. I always keep them in a plastic container. And then when I do get ready to get rid of them, I'll take some tape and I'll tape that plastic container up and uh, so that no blades can 
get out. Nobody's going to get cut. Nobody's going to get stabbed in the trash. And then I'll choose a brand new blade. And again, these are just utility knife blades. You have to be very careful though. They are razor sharp. Make sure it's in there good and tight. That's why I like these knives, uh, these utility knives. They fold up so that the blades always put away when you're done. They do have a pocket clip on them. They have a lock so you have to depress a button in order to open them. Then when you open them, they lock open. So they're really good for putting a lot of tension on the uh, knife. It has a finger rest here that's serrated so you can really put a lot of force on the blade. And then the thing I really like about it you know, no screws or anything to change the blade. You just have a little spring-loaded depression pin here, or button. You push on that button, and out pops your knife blade. Push on the button, insert your blade back in the slot, let go of the button, and it's locked in there. So, I like these knives for the way they perform, but I also like them for the safety features that they have. So, let's go ahead and cut this piece out. Now remember I do have a brand new blade so it is going to be good and sharp so I might want to take my time a little bit. I don't want to put so much pressure on it that I'm cutting through my mat. And again remember when you're cutting around rounded edges want to keep turning that material so that it's very comfortable for you to cut. You want to always be in a comfortable position. And that new blade seems like it's doing really well. And then I do try to, when I get to the corners, you might notice that I tip my knife up a little more so that I'm cutting more with the point. Then when I get to the straight areas, I'll lean my knife back down again so that I'm cutting with more of the blade edge instead of just the tip. So I get to the corner, tilt my knife up, turn my piece, so that it's comfortable for me to work with. And again, use a nice, slow, steady stroke. Get to the rounded part again here at the top. Turn my piece, tip my knife. Work my way around and then lower my knife back down, my knife angle, continue cutting. Get to the corner, rotate my piece, tip my knife up, again I'm cutting with the pointed edge. So let's we'll see how good it did. Looks like pretty well. There's couple little spots maybe that didn't make it all the way through, but not much. I can just barely glide that knife through there. It should come right off. Sometimes you run into some tougher sections of leather than others. Um, doesn't look like there's a lot I could do with this. Looks like I could probably make a couple of straps maybe out of this so I'll hang on to it. And what I'll do is I'll cut 
the top. And it looks like I can get a strap out of the bottom. So I'll cut this top piece off. I'll save it. I can do some, use it in the background for punching or use it in the vise or the stitching horse. I'll cut this off. And what that does is that gives me a nice long scrap piece to make a strap out of. I'll do the same thing on this end. Cut it off. That gives me another strap piece. And then I'll do the same thing on this end. And that gives me a nice long piece to make a strap out of. So I'll put those aside and save those. Use those at a later time. So I've got my piece, my main piece cut out. Again, that's going to be uh, folded over like this. It will have a snap on it. So that would be my outside. And as thick as this leather is, I'll probably have to take uh, I'll probably take my grooving tool and do some grooving where this is going to fold. And what that'll do is that'll make it fold much easier. And then if we wet form it or wet fold it and then hold it in a clamp, that'll keep it real nice and uh, easy to fold also. But that is fairly thick leather. But this next piece is not very thick. It's uh, probably half the thickness, I'm going to say. Yeah, half the thickness of the first leather that we used for the outside. And that's going to be for our card holders and for our bill holders. So, first thing I want to do is check it this way. Um, it's just not wide enough that direction for our bill holders. Let's check it this way. Let's see if we can get enough out for our bill holders this direction. I'll just use my fingernail to put just a little dent in there. And it looks like it's just barely going to make it. So what we'll do is we'll actually cut this in half. Uh, I don't think that's going to work that way. So what we're going to have to do is cut this and leave enough space to do our card holders. Um, that may be very interesting. I don't know if that's going to give us enough. Maybe barely enough to do that. Let's, uh, let's look and see the length that we need. We need 7 and 3 eighths length. I'm going to use a scribe this time instead of a pen because this is thinner leather. So seven and three eighths, and I'm just putting a little dimple there. And seven and three eighths, and let me see. How much that actually leaves us. It's going to leave us a little short. Alright, I do not have another piece of this exact leather. But I do have this piece, which is the same exact thickness. It's just already pre-colored. So we'll use this for the card holders. And that will give us, depending on what color of uh, dye we use on this, That'll give us a real good contrast, so it'll really make it look sharp. 
So let's do our bill holders out of this plain piece, this natural piece, and we'll do our card holders out of this darker piece. So let's go ahead and I'll cut my bill holders. And I will use a straight edge because I have a new blade and I do not want that piece to move. And that's all I had left and that's just not going to be big enough for two of these. It's not wide enough and it's not long enough. So. And then what I need to do is cut this in half the other direction and it is six and five eighths so that would be three and five sixteenths. I'm just double checking it. Six and five eighths. That'd be three and five sixteenths. Double check that side. Perfect. And that's where I'll cut that piece right down the middle. So I'll have two pieces. Exactly the same size for my bill holders. Which will go here. And I'll have to match those corners. Those rounded corners. So one would go here, and one would go up here, like so. Then, let me go ahead and match that corner right now. It's just one of them that I have to match. So, get that straight. Take my pen and go around that corner. And then I'll take my knife and follow that mark. around that corner and let's put it back up there and let's see how we did. See how good it looks. And looks like I might have to trim this one side of this piece. That looks pretty good there. Yeah, this one side I'll just trim it off a little because I want that to match perfectly so that when I sew it it'll have a good edge on it. So that's perfect. So, got that flap, this flap will stay rectangle shape. So let's put it up here and see if it needs to be trimmed or whether it's good and square. When we cut it, everything seemed to be good and square, but that doesn't mean that our top pattern, our outside piece is perfectly square either. We tried to make our pattern square, but and this one's in real good shape. So we're good there. So those two pieces are done. Those are the bill flaps. We got the bottom that does have a rounded corner 
and we got the top that's square, rectangle, doesn't have, has sharp corners. So that will actually lay in here like so. Let me give you an idea of what that's going to look like. So that will lay in there like that. There's my outside flap. And that's what it'll look like on the inside. Now, let's go ahead and cut out our card holders. And it looks like I do have a nice square edge to start with. So, I'll use my pen, def definitely on this darker material, this darker leather. Um, I want to use my pen because I really doubt if you could see a pencil mark on there because of the shade. And what I'll do is I'll go off of the same side mark so that we only have to cut that once. trying to minimize the number of cuts that we have to make. And it just, it saves leather, but it also speeds up the process if you can save those cuts. Now I'll go back, I'll follow those marks and I'm gonna try not to cut too far up into the piece of leather past my line because I want to keep any excess that I have left over for scrap. Notice I moved my piece. I'm going to come straight across. Then I'm going to go back and cut out my thumb piece. So there's one. There's two. I can save this piece. Um, if nothing else, I can use it for straps. But because it's a different color and a different thickness, that may come in real handy. So I ended up having two pieces, a piece of natural and a piece of this pre-dyed left over. And I'll hang on to that because I'll use it for different projects. Now I'll come back and cut my thumb slot. Again, knife tip up so I can cut a good radius. And I'm only using a very small portion of the blade itself so that I can turn it as I cut. And it'll give me a nice smooth radius. And here's the card that'll go in there. So it'll stick out about that far. And what that thumb hole does, or slot, finger slot, allows you to reach down and pull the card out. Instead of having that card down in here with no thumb slot and having to dig down in there to pry the card out. So. Uh, if you've ever done that, that'll drive you nuts. So that'll allow the card to stick out just a little bit and make it easier. You can see what the card is just by thumbing through and then grab a hold of it and pull it out. So 
makes it much easier. So end up with two of those. One will go here. And one will go here. And I don't know if I can hold those or maybe I can give you a close-up of what that's going to look like. Let me zoom in. So this is your bill holder. So your bills will slide in here. This is a bill holder. So you can have bills slide in here. This is a card holder. So you can have your card slide inside there. Make it easy. You get those thumb slots. This is a card holder up here. Same thing. So you should have room easily for six cards, plenty of bills, and then this is going to fold over and then it will have a snap on it. It will snap on the outside. So that's all of our pieces. So we now have all of our pieces cut out for our Western wallet using our patterns that we made in the last episode. So we've got all of our pieces ready. Next time when you come back to see the next episode we'll be starting to put this thing together. So come on back and as I always say please like share and subscribe I'll see you next time